welcome to the Dark Age tutorial video. Here you will learn the basics of Dark Age. Dark Age is a small scale skirmish game where players take control of warbands of powerful characters and units in a post apocalyptic wasteland. Gameplay is fast, fluid, and deadly, with players controlling an average of between 5 to 10 models. Each game of Dark Age takes approximately one hour or less. We will begin by looking at a stat card for a model in Dark Age. Each unit has an associated stat card will tell you everything you need to know about it. Looking at the left side of the card, we will see a model's stats. They are, from top to bottom, AP, or action points. This represents the amount of actions a model can take during its activation. Movement. This shows the distance in inches that a model can move when it spends an action on movement. Defense. This represents how well a model can dodge out of the way of attacks. Armor. This represents the general survivability of a model. Psychology. This represents a model's mental fortitude. Hit points. This represents the amount of damage a model can take before being slain. We also see on the card a model's attack groups, which we'll explain later. Below this is a model's special abilities. These are all unique and defined on the back of a unit's card. At the bottom, you see a model's squad link box. Each model in Dark Age activates individually, but certain models can pull together and form squads. On the back of the card, you see four boxes of information at the top. These are a model's size, representing its physical profile on the battlefield. The size base the model should be mounted on. The unit's availability, which is primarily used in list construction to show how many of each model a player may take. Point value. This shows the amount of points the unit costs. Armies in Dark Age are constructed using a point system, the most common size point value being 500. Below this, you'll also see a definition of any special and weapon abilities appearing on a unit's card. Now that we've covered the basics, let's see how the actual game plays out. Here we see a small skirmish between two forces. Player A controls the bounty hunters Lucky and Cesspool, while player B controls two brutes from the Outcast faction. Round 1 begins with neither player having any effects for the preparation phase, so they move to the initiative phase. Both players roll a d20, and we see the bounty hunter player rolls a 12, whereas the outcast player rolls a 19. The bounty hunter player will choose to activate cesspool. When a model activates, it may take a number of actions equal to its AP stat, which we see here is 3. For his first action, cesspool decides he is going to perform a move. He spends 1 AP to move, and may now move up to his movement value in inches. Cesspool will then check to see how far he is from the Brute. It is important to note that a player can measure range at any time for any reason. Measuring to the Brute, we see that Cesspool is 11 inches away. Looking at the range value of Cesspool's Scourge Pistol, we see that its range is a 10. Cesspool will therefore spend one additional action to move again, putting the Brute in range of his Scourge Pistol attack. Cesspool will now spend his last action to perform an attack. To perform an attack, the model will spend one AP and select one of its assault groups, or AGs. These represent the various attacks a model can perform. On the cesspool, we see that we have two options, his shiv and his scourge gun. Attacks have the following information, AS, or assault, which is how proficient a model is with the chosen attack, RF, rate of fire. This shows the maximum amount of times per round that the weapon may be used. EW, power. This represents how deadly the attack is. The higher the power of the attack, the higher chance it has of dealing damage. RN, range. Distance, in inches, the attack can be used. A range of zero represents a melee attack, which may only be used if the attacker and defender are in base-to-base -base contact. MAL, malfunction. In Dark Age, technology is not reliable as it once was. If model attacks and they roll weapons mal value or higher, something has gone wrong and the attack has backfired on the attacker. Below this are a weapon's abilities. These represent the unique traits and powers of the attack. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be ignoring a weapon's abilities in favor of showing you the basics. Note, however, that each weapon's abilities are unique and defined on the back of their card. In this case, Cesspool chooses to use his Scourge Pistol. To perform an attack, the player first makes sure the target is in range of the attack. He then takes the AS value of his attack and adds it to his target's defense value. This creates the target number, the attack must roll equal to or under to score a hit. It's important to note that rolling low in Dark Age is genuinely preferred. 
In addition to this, however, some other rules might modify this number. One of these rules is what's known as a range penalty. When making a ranged attack, the attacker will suffer a cumulative minus one penalty for every four inches between him and the target. Here we see that the brute is seven inches away, being that Cesspool will suffer a minus one penalty for the shot. Adding Cesspool's AS of six to the brute's defense of six, his target number is 12. Now subtract one for the range penalty, and we see that Cesspool needs to roll an 11 or less to hit the brute. Cesspool rolls a 10, scoring a hit. Once a model has been hit, it must perform an armor save. To do this, the defender will subtract the power of the attack from his armor value. This creates the target number he needs to roll equal to or under to avoid suffering any damage. If he rolls above this number, he has failed his armor check and loses 1 HP. We see that the brute has an armor of 16. Subtracting the power of Cesspool's Scourge Pistol, which is 4, we see that the brute must roll a 12 or less to avoid suffering damage. The brute rolls a 19 failing his armor save. Luckily, the brute has two HP. Counter is placed next to him to show that he has one HP remaining. Cesspool now has spent all three of his AP, so his activation ends. It is now the outcast player's turn to activate one of their brutes. He chooses to activate the wounded brute. We see that the brute has no ranged attack, so he wants to get into melee as fast as he can. We see that he has three AP and three movement, meaning if all he did was spend AP on movement, he can move a total of 9 inches. The Brute spends all of his available AP to move into contact with Cesspool. Usually, this would mean that the Brute's activation is now over, as he has no remaining AP. Luckily for him, however, he has triggered a special action known as a Charge. Whenever a model spends AP on movement, and that movement brings them into contact with an enemy model, that is what is known as a Charge. When this happens, the Charging model immediately gains one free AP to make an attack with. In addition to this, the attack gains a plus one bonus to AS and power to represent the momentum gained by the assault. Using his free charge AP, the Brute selects attack group number one, which is his block stopper attack. Adding his AS of seven to Cesspool's defense of two, he gets nine. He also gains plus one for the charge bonus, so the Brute will need to roll a 10 or less to hit his target. The Brute has rolled a 16, which unfortunately means Cesspool has dodged out of the way of the attack. Since the Brute is now out of AP, his activation ends and the turn goes back to the Bounty Hunter player. Having already activated Cesspool this round, the Bounty Hunter player activates his last remaining model, the Bounty Hunter known as Lucky. Lucky begins her turn by spending two AP on movement, allowing her to move up to six inches. Checking range, we see that Lucky is within three inches of the Brute, meaning she could charge him. Lucky, however, is not a melee fighter and instead prefers to take a shot at the unactivated Brute. Checking range on Lucky's flare gun, she sees that she has more than enough range to hit the Brute, who is only 7 inches away. Lucky's AS is 8, and the Brute's defense is 6, making Lucky's target number 14 before further modifiers. She does, however, suffer minus 1 to this due to range penalties. In addition to this, however, we see that there is a piece of terrain in between her and her target. Terrain plays an important factor in Dark Age, as it can provide numerous benefits and change the tactical nature of the battle. In this case, the piece of foliage provides what is known as light cover, which provides a minus two to any range attack crossing over it. Taking this into account, Lucky will now have to roll an 11 or less to hit the Brute. Her original target number of 14, minus one from range penalties, and another minus two from cover. Looking at Lucky's flare gun, we see one more unique aspect, the last two rule. Last attacks are a special form of range attack in that they can hit multiple targets, representing an explosive weapon or ammunition type. Last attacks use their own set of templates. In this case, when the attack is declared, Lucky will take the Blast 2 template and place it over the Brute. The difference between normal ranged attacks and Blast attacks is that if the Blast attack misses its initial target, it's a chance to deviate off, hitting something nearby. Lucky makes her attack roll and rolls a 17, missing the Brute. When a Blast attack misses, it will scatter to a nearby location. To determine the location, the player will roll a further d20. Each facet of a d20 is shaped like a triangle. When this number is rolled, the top position of the triangle will show the direction in which the blast moves. The blast will be moved a number of inches equal to half the amount shown on the die. In this case, Lucky has rolled a 4. Therefore, the blast will move 2 inches in the direction indicated by the d20. We see that, after moving the template, the brute is still underneath the weapon meaning that he is hit. 
Further looking at Lucky's flare gun, we see that its power is listed as 4 times 2. The times 2 is what's known as a power multiplier. What this means is the target will have to pass 2 armor saves at a minus 4 to avoid suffering any damage. In this case, the brute has an armor of 16. 4 subtracted from 16 will bring his armor to 12, meaning the brute must pass 2 armor saves at 12 to avoid suffering any damage from this attack. The Brute has rolled a 4 and an 18. While the 4 has succeeded on the save, the 18 has not, meaning the Brute will suffer 1 damage. It is important to note that even if the Brute had failed both saves, he would still only suffer a single point of damage. The Brute is given a wound, and Lucky's activation ends. The Outcast player will now activate his remaining Brute. He will spend his first AP to move him 3 inches up the battlefield, and then spend his remaining 2 AP to move him 6 inches into contact with Cesspool. Like before, this results in a charge attack. We then take the Brute's AS of 7 and add it to Cesspool's Defense of 2. Once again, Brute will receive a plus 1 due to his charge bonus. In addition to this, however, he receives another bonus known as a Gang Up bonus. A gang Up bonus occurs whenever two or more models are in contact with the same enemy. The attacking model receives plus 1 AS and plus 1 power for each ally in contact with his target. In this case, the Brute will need to roll an 11 or less. 7 for his AS, 2 for Cesspool's defense, 1 for his charge bonus, and a further plus 1 for his gang up bonus. The Brute rolls an 8, succeeding in hitting Cesspool with his attack. Cesspool has an armor of 10, usually not very survivable. Let's take a look at his special abilities. Per the sidestep rule, when the model is hit by a non-critical hit from a melee or template attack, it may roll d20. On a roll of 12 or less, the attack roll is discarded. This gives Cesspool an additional chance to dodge out of the way of the attack. Cesspool rolls for his sidestep and rolls a 15, failing in his check. Cesspool must now perform his armor save. Looking again at the Brute's uber block crush attack, we see that its power is 6 times 2. It gains a further plus 1 from the charge bonus and a further plus 1 from the Ganga bonus bringing its total to a devastating 8 times 2 meaning Cesspool will have to pass 2 saves at a minus 8 to avoid suffering any damage. In this case, that means that both dice must read 2 or less. In addition to this, let's take this time to look at the weapon abilities of the Brute. We see here that the Brute's weapon has two special abilities, Brutal and Extreme Damage. Brutal is a weapon ability that states the parry special ability may not be used against it. Cesspool does not have this parry special ability, so this weapon ability does not apply. Extreme Damage, however, states that when a model fails an armor save caused by this attack, they lose 2 HP instead of the normal 1. This is very relevant, as Cesspool only has 2 HP, meaning that if he fails his attack, he will be slain outright. Cesspool rolls his dice, and rolls an 11 and a 3, succeeding in neither check. Cesspool has failed his armor save, and suffers 2 damage. Because he only has 2 HP, he has now been slain, and is removed from the table as a casualty. Now that all models have activated, the activation phase ends, and the Lingering Effects phase begins. Neither player has any rules that come into play during Lingering Effects, so the round ends. Round 2 will begin, with both players rolling initiative. Play will continue until either 8 rounds have passed, or all models on one side have been slain. That concludes our Dark Age tutorial. You can find the full rules available for download at www.darkage.com along with all stat cards related to all models.